Purple and Angie here. Today I'm going to show you how I made my very own working coconut foam. For something a bit silly and fun, I decided to learn how to make my own mobile foam. It was a good opportunity to learn about all that talk about 5G and stuff. More on that later. This project is based around the Adafruit Feather Phone Board. It is an all-in-one board with a built-in 2G module. There are detailed tutorials on the site to show you how to test and use the fauna in your project. So I definitely recommend checking it out. Some things you'll need are a UFL antenna, 6mm tactile buttons, a LiPo battery, a mic, 39mm 0.25 watt speaker, a slide switch, 2G SIM card, 3D printed frame, silicone wire, a breadboard, and most importantly, a coconut. Any other bits I've forgotten will be listed down in the description. So, let's begin! To start off, I soldered header pins to the feather so that I could easily prototype and test out all the connections on a breadboard. I added in a speaker, a mic, and connected the antenna. Once that was done, I was ready to do a basic test and load up the Arduino sketch. You will need to slot in a SIM card to see if everything worked. For me, I had a bit of a problem with the SIM. The first one I used wouldn't recognize or communicate with the network provider. Eventually, I got it to work by switching to another network provider. The FANA is based on 2G. For my area of the world, 2G networks are still used even though they only offer 3G and 4G SIM cards. So it was a bit of trial and error, but it definitely works. With a proper network connection, you can try to make and receive some calls. You may need to adjust the volume code to hear the person on the other side. But otherwise, everything should work. Just a quick juicy tidbit, the G's. Most mobile phones in the world use either 2G, 3G, or 4G to communicate with the tower. But what do those numbers mean? The G basically stands for generation. With each generation, we can send and receive more data faster. This is what makes it possible to stream high quality music videos to your phone. They utilize higher frequencies to allow more dense data to be sent and received. But higher frequencies means shorter wavelengths, which means that it can travel shorter distances and are more susceptible to obstacles. For example, 2G and 4G, they have a range of about 50 kilometers to 150 kilometers. Upcoming 5G will have a range of as little as 250 meters to 150 kilometers, depending on which version. This means that to have the best speeds for 5G, we'll have to build a bunch more radio towers, especially in the densely populated areas where there'll be more obstacles. Now, back to the build. Once that was done, it was time to make it a bit more functional with some buttons. It would be kind of weird to have to lug a computer around every time you wanted to make a call. The circuit for the buttons are pretty straightforward. There are three buttons. One to make a call, one to end a call, and one to answer a call. They are connected to the same negative lead, and each button will connect to an individual pin on the board. A0 for call, A1 for end a call, and A2 for answer. With all the basics working, it was time for the fun part, customization. And just like a regular phone, I wanted to customize the ringtone. I found some simple tone references online of the tunes that I wanted to try out. For most of my testing, I used a simple Tinkercad circuit simulation to test things out. You will need to add the note table list to the top of the code. This will cover most of the note frequencies you'll need. Change the tone references to the tone that you want to play. Remember to change the repeat length to the number of notes in your tune. A bit of trial and error to get the right timings and you are good to go. This phone will only be able to call one number. For a future project, I'm thinking of incorporating a keyboard so I can call any number that I like. So with everything working, it's time to put it into something. Don't ask me why, but this coconut just seemed to scream out, Make me into a phone! 
I took a regular coconut and drained all the tasty juice. To make sure I cut a relatively straight line, I used blue tape to mark it off. And after a bit of work, I had two cleanly cut halves. You will need to leave the coconuts out to dry before moving on to the next step. To create the insert to hold everything, I needed to make sure that the frame would fit into the coconut. I started with scanning the coconut so that I could trace its outline. These outlines were then imported into Tinkercad to model the inserts. I created a 1cm by 1cm square to use as a size reference for the SVG. I used the inner shape as a cookie cutter to make the initial ring insert. Then I enlisted the help of my dad to help make a working hinge. I was able to use 3D models of the 8 different parts instead of starting from scratch. This allowed me to easily line up and create brackets and standoffs at the right size in Tinkercad. Using SVGs of my hand drawings, I was also able to create more custom organic designs on the panels. With all the parts tested and printed, it's time to put everything together. I replicated my prototype into the frame. This was mostly straightforward, mostly soldering and measuring to make sure everything fit. A little bit of hot glue and screws kept everything in place. For some parts, I used magnets so that I could take things apart to change and reprogram if I needed. Ta-da! My coconut phone all done! I can make and receive calls pretty much anywhere. I already have some ideas on how to make a more pocketable version. Also, I would need to figure out how to put in a keypad so I could call other numbers. It may not be the most practical phone, but I had a lot of fun learning about radio waves and putting everything together. It being a coconut just made it so much more silly and fun to make it actually work. If you like this video, please give me a like. And for more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel, Purple NG. Also, click that little bell icon to get a reminder of my new videos. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye! Sloth mode!